So, I was talking with a friend of mine the other night, and he kind of just, in the midst of a conversation, we're talking about theology, and all of a sudden he just kind of twitches and goes, why don't you, why don't you look for somebody? Why don't you want to get married? And so I thought I'd answer that. First Corinthians chapter 7 tells us that Paul says, I wish everybody be, be married, but I mean, I wish everyone would be single, but if singleness is a gift, being married is a gift. Not everybody has is called to be married. Not everyone is called to be single. Know your gift. Any preacher that tells you there's someone out there for you very well may be lying. Uh, just I'm just putting it out there. And then it goes on to, later, 25 through 35, and basically says, uh, time is short, live like it. Um, if you're married and have families, don't forget what, why, who you worship. And then he goes on to say, look, if you're single, seek the Lord. If you're married, understand that you, you will divide your time between seeking the Lord and, and being a pleasure to your family and, a, and looking after the affairs of this world. So that's 1 Corinthians 7. And that's what the Bible basically says. Years ago, there was a woman. Her name was Melissa. Heard from God about me. Had had I had it confirmed through someone else. Shortly after that, I heard from God about her. Had a prophetic dream. Had a prophet come up with names and detail, telling me this is where the, that she was going to be my wife. We get married, and when when we get married, all kinds of things, and all hell kind of broke loose. Okay. And I didn't understand, but I knew it, the Lord before he told either of us, he knew the problems. He knew the struggles. He knew all the nonsense. But he said, I'm still calling you to it. Okay? And, and that's important to understand. Before the Lord tells you to do something, he knows everything that's going to happen. And he, yet he still calls you to it. Shortly into the marriage, she gets pregnant. When she gets pregnant, a lot of things change. All of a sudden, she, for whatever reason, freaked out and left the marriage. That's just, that's the facts. Okay, and so now we have a child, a child that doesn't doesn't isn't going to have the family pattern that God has called us to it, it the Bible talks about in first Corinthians chapter four that we are the fathers pr produce a pattern and without that pattern in place it brings destruction to the family as well as to the children so we have this issue a lot of trauma, a lot of trauma happened. A lot of things happened that shouldn't have happened. And I'll just leave it there. That experience went on for two years. Two years later, I'm dealing with suicidal ideations because I just, I cannot wrap my mind around why God would call me to do, do something and then watch it go up in flames. I just, I couldn't rationalize those two. And I was, crazy, crazy experience, uh, circumstances end up in Jill Austin's living room, laid out in the Holy Ghost, and she prophesied, okay? I thought everything was going to change immediately. Didn't. Nothing changed, okay? And so that's where, and that was, and I wrestled with that for a long time long time. So, I say all of that to set the context up for I have major trust issues when it comes to women. I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I have the whole issue of abandonment, the whole issue of betrayal, the whole issue of can I trust even my own spirit when it comes to this because I know that I heard from God. She knows that she heard from God, yet it went up in flames. So what would make things different? Nothing. They're, 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 I mean, if you can't trust, we're hearing the word of the Lord. 
because you can't trust in resources. You can't trust in wisdom, 1, Corinthians, 1 Kings 13. You have to trust in the word of the Lord. And I have the word of the Lord. She had the word of the Lord, yet it went up in flames. That's, that's the basic reason why I'm single of, you know, what would be different? You know, in this last year, I've had two opportunities with friends of mine, female friends of mine, that there could have been something. There could be something. I can't do it because I, at the end of the day, I can't trust. At the end of the day, I, I have no assurance that even if I were, even if I knew I heard from the Lord about them, that it wouldn't go up in flames again. And is that trauma? Yes. People have no idea how dramatic and how traumatic things were at that time. I, I al almost define, if people ask me about PTSD and about trauma, this is the top of the list. And so, it, it's nothing, and it's never been, there's never been closure. There's never been, you know, walk through this. Um, it's just, it's just this open wound that, that has never been closed and probably never will be closed. And now there's a young man that was the fruit of that, of that, that's, dealing with all kinds of confusion because there is because he should have he should have been raised with his mother and his father in in the same home pursuing the presence of God together loving God together but that was not how things worked out for him so what do you do i you know i mean so anyways that that's the main thing hold on my little sweet tea That that's the main issue, and and that's that's where things are, um, and and so I have I have those I have those challenges, and I I just I can't get around them, and because of that I I can't I can't trust a woman, I can't uh, I can't even trust the word of the Lord about a woman, because you know. I clearly heard from the Lord through a prophet, through a dream, double confirmation. It's obvious, it's obvious to everyone around us. And then it goes up in flames. So, that's it. That's my answer. See ya.